Hello and welcome back to another episode of Power Rangers Lore. Today we're going to talk about none other than the Ninja Blaze Megazord. The Ninja Blaze Megazord, the final Megazord of the Ninja Steel Power Rangers, made up a grand total of six different Zords all of which are born straight out of the Morphe Grid itself and can wreck anyone's day, especially if you're an evil villain. Now these six swords include the Falcon Zord, the Serpent Zord, the Tortoise Zord, the Tiger Zord, the Panda Zord, and the Piranha Zord. All of those sounds pretty good, except for the Piranha Zord kind of really throws me off. But hey, you know, whatever, you have to combine blue somehow in there in any way possible. But the Piranha Zord just doesn't seem like it works with the rest of these animals at all <laughs> but hey what do i know it showed up a grand total of eight episodes and it would only show up after all the other zords were heavily damaged in a fight against the Feroxatron or madame odious's Feroxatron. now its powers were only called upon when madame odious's Feroxatron had destroyed the other zord stars and prevented them from even being repaired at all this was because while super ninja steel was Difficult to melt down and reforge, as well as it's hard to break, but once you break it, it's really hard to redo it entirely. Now, the prism itself showed them in a vision of six new zords, which Mick had no knowledge and goes, I don't know what any of this is. Like, I have a lot of knowledge of all different things, but that's entirely new, and I've never seen these before at all. Now, they attempt to try to forge new stars entirely like they kind of did something in the past except for it doesn't work this time and that's when suddenly three mysterious cloaked figures basically just step out of a portal um and into their base itself and telling them according to legend that the prism star can only grant the heroes these ninja blaze stars if they prove themselves worthy the rangers go oh, okay we can we can do that we can prove ourselves worthy Mysterious strangers you and then the mysterious strangers leave just as abruptly However, these rangers seem to misunderstand what worthy actually means like Thor from Well the Marvel entire series they believe that power and the ability to fight makes them worthy well, that's not true and during their trying to prove themselves as fighters and proving that it doesn't release the blaze sword stars entirely they are kind of left without a point or reason to even continue going. They go, we're going to lose. How How is this not proving us to be worthy at all? Now, the time is ticking, and they've only got like an hour or so left until essentially the Frog Hunter returns, and they are completely destroyed. And Mick gives them another option to essentially help themselves. He says, like, maybe I can attempt to jumpstart their old ninja zord stars and here give me go collect these materials and we can see if we can get them all put together to help them basically re-energize them just for a little bit to give you a little bit of an edge rather than completely undefended entirely now while collecting these necessary materials quote unquote um calvin and Haley kind of get distracted and stop to help miss finch pull her wedding ring out of a sewer grate completely like going hey we're on limited time but you know what we're gonna help you too it won't take too long i mean we still got some time right so they help her entirely now brody levi and sarah help victor and monty who are always in trouble in some fashion i surprised that these guys don't have more broken bones than anybody else in the entire franchise of power rangers besides bulk and skull but they seem to really get their head stuck anywhere well they get their head stuck together with a botched chemical mixture and the three help them, well, get apart. Now Preston aids a new girl, Sandy, with her science project and kind of helps out there because, you know, he was kind of supposed to do so the entire time. But, you know, he got a little distracted with saving the world and also we'll give him a pass on that one. Now after that, they can get all the chemicals and necessary materials together put it in a chemical bath, zap them with electrodes, and they manage to jumpstart the Nitro Zord Star. However, it needs time to rest. It literally just regenerated, and these Zords are kind of living things. I mean, not like the same thing that we are, but we go about the same day, and 
breathe, eat, and stuff like this, but they also need energy. They are also there to fight for the forces of good, and they have to recharge from the Mortifree Grid energy itself. Now, however, at that same exact moment, the Ninja Blading Stars are shot out of the prism itself, who, technically speaking, the prism itself is more sentient than any other thing there. It has been watching the Rangers since day one, and seeing that they were proved worthy, decided to help them in their darkest hour. Now, this is only explained to the Rangers when the three cloaked figures reveal themselves once more and go, helping people in the darkest hour has proved them most worthy to the prism. And then abruptly departing after that saying, we will beat again! <laughs> With no context of like who they were at all. Now, this is when Wolvermine would show up and go giant to get his revenge before Madame Odious's Froxatron can, you know, kill the rangers and take out his satisfaction for revenge. Now, they go out and go, oh crap, and they summon the new zords and instantly basically kind of wreck Wolvermine's day, push him back, take away his shield, and then that's when he's suddenly going, I'll still beat you, and then he's stabbed in the back, quite literally, by Madame Odious in her Foxatron lightsaber-wielding Megazord. Now, the battle after is pretty good and intense. However, the Rangers still manage to defeat the evil Zord of Madame Odious, and much to the approval of the three mysterious figures, we were kind of revealed that they're Power Rangers in disguise. You know, if you throw a cloak over anything, I'm going to assume you're Andros or a Power Ranger at this point. Now, the Zord itself will be used several other times in a few other episodes, as suggested when it's shown in eight total episodes, and would be able to survive the rest of the series all the way to the very end of Ninja Steel. Now, I love this whole kind of design of the Ranger. Um, it has some alternate forms as well, and one of these alternate forms is the combination of the Ninja Blade Megazord, the Bull Rider Megazord, and the Lion Fire Megazord. Now, he basically looks like a... Uh, I have multiple... Thing. He basically looks like a Shogun sitting in his own personal throne that is a living throne. Or you could also kind of look at it and go, if you know anything about Warhammer 40k, he looks like the Emperor sitting upon his golden throne, but he's not a corpse. In this form, he has a basically a huge variety of guns because it's all the Zords combined on top of each other. And he can even call upon his finish move, the Ninja Blaze Firestorm, which it fires energy versions of the six Blaze Zords at an opponent, leaving behind a star emblem of each Zord passing through the opponent like some sort of ninja stars. Entirely stars, ninja stars. We get it. Understandable. We understand your entire, like, symbolology here. Symbology. Oh, I can't do words right now. Now, as of the other forms, there isn't really any other, though it is suggested, in my opinion, that if it can combine with three Zords, it could combine with two to make other Zords entirely. It didn't need to go all. Let's combine every single Zord into one. So it would have been interesting to see what they would have combined in other different versions of it. Um, I don't like the Ninja Blaze Ultra Zords look, per se. I think they could have done something more ninja-esque rather like going full shogun there but hey i'm not in charge of the full development and technically speaking neither are they so because it's all material for the sentai um now let's look at their individual zords here that combine to make up the ninja blaze megazord and that is the falcon zord and it is a glider themed zord that forms the headdress of the ninja blaze megazord and by headdress, I mean literally its crown. It's literally, I mean literally by its whole like function. It just wraps around the back of its head and goes, oh, it's a crown there. That's kind of its only real point. I don't know what it kind of does to unlock anything. But, you know, hey, what do I know? The other one is the Serpent Zord, which more looks like a motorcycle to me. It does. If you look at it very carefully, you'll notice it looks very similar to a motorcycle. It is, a, yeah, yeah, and it's called a motorbike themed Zord that has no other real thing besides that, and it forms the, forms the right arm of the Ninja Blaze Megazord. I mean, I feel as though someone should ride it. I, I felt like that should have been a major thing. Like, all the other Zords, they, like, I felt like one of the other Zords could have, like, been a humanoid. Like, instead of Piranha, it could have been, like, humanoid ninja. 
jumping on top of that, riding that into battle, and then the rest of them doing it. But hey, what do I know? Now the other one is the Tortoise, or the Black Tortoise, a tank-themed Zord, which makes full sense to me. It's basically like a hover tank. I'm fine with this. That forms the chest, torso, waist, and thigh. That guy is basically covering up everything else. Like, I am the main part of this Zord. Look at me. Um, and he's the very center of it all. His also forms the head during the actual formation, because it pops out and then the Falcon Zord wraps around it to make it the crowned head. Now, uh, we also have the, ooh, this is interesting, four-wheel drive vehicle-themed Zord. I don't know why they need to put that as the four-wheel drive themed <laughs> vehicle-themed Zord, but it, it forms the right leg, and that is the Tiger Zord. And it's very basic design. I know what they're doing. They, it was like, hey, it's only going to be in a grand total of these small amount of episodes, so, you know, we're going we're gonna to show some more stuff here. We'll go from that. Um, can't complain about it. It's very basic. Like, I understand some of these. The Falcon Zord, I don't even know why it was necessary to have the crown. I mean, it looks cool, but come on. You could have just taken that, like, given it wings. Literally. Um, but whatever. Now, the Panda Zord is a helicopter-themed Zord. And you know what? I'm okay with the helicopter theme. I don't know where they got, like, they go, hey... We know what we're gonna do. Panda. Helicopter themed. That's it. Yeah. Very strange there, but you know, hey, I'm not gonna go against it. I can see the helicopter in like the the ninja blade there. But technically speaking, by that same like little symbol there, like I'll door, I'll have these all posted up, you're probably looking at it right now. But like on the backs of these Zords, you see the ninja star symbols. Technically speaking, the Tiger Zord could have been helicopter themed too. But hey, what do I know? The the tortoise makes sense that it's the, basically a hover tank. I'm fine with that. And the Serpent Zord's got wheels. It's a motorcycle bike. That makes sense too. And the Falcons can fly. But why does the Panda fly? Why is that the helicopter? Now... We're going to go into my other one that's really confusing to me, the Piranha Zord. Now, all of these other ones have something to do with essentially China-Japan type things here. Ninjas were involved. Falcons are heavily used. Dragons or serpents. Tortoises and tigers and pandas are all kind of the Asian theme there, and it all makes sense to me. But Piranha? Where did a piranha go? And it's a submarine-themed Zord. Now, if you're going to ever, like, put a submarine-themed Zord, you're going to use it as a submarine, right? Right? Why is everyone... Like, you could have named it Spaceship-themed Zord, and it would have worked just as perfectly. Because you know what? They never really went to underwater. They never really did anything else with it. They, they were like, hey, we're going to make this individual... Like... I feel as though if they they could have used the Tiger Zord to like, oh man, this thing's stuck. Let's let's pull it out with our four-wheel drive vehicle. Cool, glad we have that. Or the helicopter theme Zord Panda. Hey kids, I know you're trapped in this building. Look, it's a panda. I know I was just insulting the panda-themed helicopter Zord, but like they could have been like, hey kids, it's just a panda. Roar, get in the panda. We're gonna save you from this high building that's about to collapse. Um, they're getting under fire from the tor uh, tortoise sword. They have to get closer. Makes sense. They gotta go fast. Sonic fast. I, I, I don't know why I want to use that, but for the serpent sword. And then the falcon sword, they got like, oh, we gotta hold off the enemy forces while the other guys are pulling everything out here. We'll just do some aerial tricks in the sky and do some blasting moves with the falcon sword. But then you've got the piranha. And I'm, I'm really upset by this one. It's the black carp. And submarine zooms. Why is it called the Piranha Zord and it's called the Black Carp? What the heck is going on here? If someone can tell me, please let me know. Because I'm more confused. Entirely. Because, okay, also, it is the Black Carp, but we also have the Black Tortoise. And the Azure Dragon. The Red Falcon, essentially, where we're going to go there. And the White Tiger, because it's white. Um, I can understand all of these, except for 
you know, the panda and the piranha. Or the piranha really throws me off because it's called the black carp, but it's a piranha. And I can see it at piranha here because it doesn't look like a carp because it's got teeth. And piranhas have teeth, and that's what they're known for. That's why we call them piranhas. What is going on here? This is not a magic carp. This is not a Gyarados. Ugh. So, other than that, that is the Ninja Blaze Megazord. The final and most powerful of the Ninja Ranger, Ninja Steel Ranger Zords. Let me know what you guys think. If you guys have any commentary, if you have any more information that I would know about, or don't know about, or I should know about, feel free to go, hey, idiot, this is where this came from. Or they did use it as a submarine. Or they did use it as a bike. And they probably did use the other one as a bike because there wasn't a picture of um, them driving in a cockpit. Which, I don't know why I would have a cockpit. I felt like they could have just made him extra big. Like, the original ninja style. Or they just made him like just super big and he just rode it. And then when he got closer, he just jumps off of it and goes back to normal size. That had been interesting to me. But hey, whatever. If I did miss that, please let me know. I am I have a whole bunch of knowledge and not enough room in my head to contain it all. So thank you guys very much for watching this far. Have a good one. May the power protect you always. And make sure to like, comment, and subscribe down below to keep going on here forward. Now, this weekend we will be doing the official live stream. I'll be doing a post for that. So if you guys don't get this far, you will eventually see it up there. So this weekend we'll be doing a live stream we'll probably be doing it on a sunday because that is my easiest day to actually do that thank you guys have a go and may the power protect you always and forever one last time from me for this episode